Okay. So I know that we've had, yesterday was not really a great day for everybody. Um, with Dwayne Emmer turning himself in, which was quite emotional. And with um, Jake Ryan getting taken from the courtroom right before his birthday. And everything that's gone on. And then there's also um, a lot of talk about the motion, Dave Bundy's motion to dismiss that was denied. Now I want to make sure everyone knows um, that motion was over a year old. So that is not the current motion to dismiss. And um, it, it does get confusing, especially because there's a lot of motions that are just sitting on the docket. Um, I know when our trial started, um, we had joined her onto a lot of motions that were never ruled on before we went to court. And I guess that's how they can work it if it's just a joinder, if you weren't the actual one that put it in to begin with. So I don't know if she was just clearing the uh, docket or exactly what's going on, but I know we had joined her like tier three, which went to trial first. I know it's confusing. Um, had joined her on to a lot of those motions um, of people, especially, you know, the Bundys and Ryan Payne's motions. Um, and we kind of weren't able to even hear what happened with those. So before we went to trial, because it, it depends on whose lawyer actually files the motion and then people are able to join her on to it. So Dave's uh, motion to dismiss that was denied that was an over a year old and the motion to dismiss based on outrageous government conduct and the destruction of evidence this was actually filed by Mel Bundy that is still active and still sitting on the docket waiting for the government to respond and then the judge to rule on it so um, we still have a lot of a lot of things could happen here it's not for sure I know that there is a calendar call on February 8th and um, that is for tier two that are gonna go to trial last so the calendar call for them is February 8th um, Eric's sentencing just got pushed from the second to the eighth or the fifth to the eighth we're kinda a little confused about that um, could be that she had something else going on in her courtroom but that's been pushed and I'm waiting to hear back from Scott because his, his was on the second, but may also be pushed back, so I'm waiting to hear about that exactly. So we still have a lot of things going on, and it's kind of hard because everything's been separated out to keep up with everything. So I want to go through some of the things that I know, and of course I'm going to miss things as well. So um, always, you know, share the information that we have. I'm going to put out, you know, I'm going to put out some of these links and then when I'm done with the video I'll go back and I will edit the top of it so that it has all of this information there is lots of things that we need there's something that everyone could do of course there's financial support needed everywhere but there's also um, letter writing support uh, contacting your representative support contacting the DOJ support we need to keep their feet to the fire here because if we just say okay and just wait for something to happen we've got to make sure that it's going to happen so first thing that I've seen recently is Greg Burleson um, Greg Burleson had a seizure in the prison that he's in and um, he wasn't being cared for adequately I know that I was in his sentencing he was supposed to be in a medical facility I, I did see there some people were saying that they do consider themselves a tier three medical um, facility I do know the phone calls and the letters to the facilities do help I've seen them help in Pahrump in Henderson so I'm going to put this out there the support political prison Patriot prisoner Greg Burleson page is a great place to get updates on that you can go to that page and read exactly um, all the information about his seizure and what is needed there so please if you are not if you have not liked this page please go to it because that's a great place to still get information on Greg Burleson now uh, Greg Burleson was in tier 3 uh, the people that went to trial first 
Um, he was found guilty of all the charges except for the first two conspiracy charges um, and sentenced to, I want to say, 68 years in um, prison, which is a life sentence with how old he is. And um, we're hoping with all of this, you know, all of these Brady violations, all this exculpatory evidence that was mithheld, uh, withheld, they were, it was withheld from him as well. So we'll just have to see. I'm hoping that his lawyer will be able to appeal and he will get out. One more time, that is the support political patriot prisoner, Greg Burleson. I will try at the end of the video to get all the links at the top. Um, and if somebody's here that can link it um, in the comments, please do. Okay. So then we go to the next person on the list, which would be Todd Engel. Now, Todd Engel is still waiting sentencing. He was found guilty. He was also in Tier 3, one of the first groups that went to um, trial. And he was found guilty of obstruction of justice and interstate travel in aid of extortion. He, his original point um, system, they, they're looking at like 18 to 20 years. Um, so he's still waiting to go to sentencing. And like I said, all of this Brady violations, all of this um, outrageous government conduct and withholding the evidence, all of this goes to them too, especially to Todd Engel. He was actually stripped of his right to go pro se. Let's see, I didn't turn my speaker on, so maybe that helps a little. Uh, stripped of his right to go pro se during the trial. You know, when the judge was dismissing uh, Tier 1's uh, case, they spoke of Todd Engel, and, and she spoke of the mm -hmm. fact that if these guys in Tier 3 that went to trial first would have had this information we would have been able to have a self-defense defense, defense as a defense of self and defense of others defense, and um, that would have opened a lot more doors for us. So no, we did not get a fair trial. We didn't get a fair trial the first time. We didn't get a fair trial the second time, and they were still going to try two of our guys for a third time. So this is all information that we need to get like I would definitely suggest continually writing the DOJ I know that they are doing an investigation into the trials but what we need to do is make sure that they know that we're all still wanting this that we're all still pushing for this and we need to include tier 3 tier 1 tier 2 everyone needs to be included on this including Jerry DeLumis that was um, that took his plea deal early and anybody that took a plea deal. So, um, Todd Engel, he has not gone to sentencing yet, but he did have another hearing. He has had some of the worst luck with lawyers. Um, he, he decided to go pro se because his lawyer was literally so bad. And I witnessed this myself. The lawyer was falling asleep in the courtroom. Um, he was just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, if that person was representing me, I would, go crazy because he was a joke um, so he's still looking at going to sentencing and he was able to get a new lawyer on his case but this new lawyer is a paid lawyer so it looks like they need twenty five thousand dollars or twenty five hundred I'm not sure you could go to the Brianna Bundy did a post about this sorry I have it written down but I'm not sure if it's right so um, Brianna Bundy did a post about exactly what was needed. And there's a couple different ways that you can help Todd. Now, um, he has a PayPal, paypal.me uh, forward slash freedom for Todd. Um, yeah, so it is 25000 Thank you. And um, we need to get him this money so that his lawyer can do everything that he needs to do so that they can appeal this. Um, not only was he found guilty of the two lesser charges, but they're still trying to do a point system for the interstate travel and aid of extortion like it was extortion. And it's two totally separate things. So um, it's very important that we get Todd this help. Um, he is still sitting in prison. There are three men still sitting in prison for this. This is Todd Engel, Greg Burleson that I talked about just a minute ago, and Jerry DeLumis. Everyone else is out. Some of them are still awaiting trial. Some of them are still awaiting um, 
sentencing, but these men are still in prison. So they're still needing your letters. They are still needing financial aid for their commissaries. Todd's needing it for his lawyer. We've got a lot of um, support that's needed. Also, another thing that Todd has done that he has just set up, Todd has a tattoo, a patriot, patriotic tattoo. And he has turned um, his tattoo into a shirt, um, and he's using this as a fundraiser to help pay for his lawyer. Now, you can find this information on the Support Todd Ingle page, Support Todd Ingle um, Political Prisoner. Um, so that is needed as well. I really think that this shirt is fantastic. You do have to pre-order the shirt so that they, um, they're trying to save costs with how much they print them. So it is a pre-order. The shirts will be sent out afterwards. Um, so we are, you know, that's definitely something. They have the date in there. If we can get in there, order those shirts. I know Todd would appreciate it. You will be wearing a shirt that has Todd's actual tattoo on the shirt. It's a, they're very great um, shirts. So, okay, I've seen a couple comments. I'm going to break into these comments. No, Mel has not been dismissed. Tier 2 is out, but they are still under pretrial services. So they have all the restrictions. Me and Eric are under pretrial services. Eric and Scott are under pretrial trial services, as well as many of the other people um, that are waiting sentencing. So, but we'll get to those guys here in a minute. So once again, support Todd Ingle. We've got a couple different things going on for Todd, um, and I'm going to talk about some of the things that I'm going to personally try to do for Todd um, a little bit later in this. I was uh, talking about different things that we've done in the past, um, some auctions and things that we could get going. And I actually have something really neat I will show you at the end of this that I'm going to put up for auction for Todd Ingle. I also made myself a Shutterfly photo book. Um, and it has pictures of me and people at the first two trials, um, the guys being released for the first trial. And um, I actually made it for myself, so there's a lot of like selfie pictures with me and a bunch of other people in it. But because everything is going on, I actually took it with me to Montana. And I had Cliven and Carol sign it. Um, Joe Robertson was there. He signed it. Shauna Cox. Uh, Ryan Bundy signed it. I'm going to get Eric and Steve and Scott to sign it here in town. Possibly try to get over to Ammon to get it, him to sign it. And then we're going to auction that off for Todd. Whether we do a live auction or a raffle auction, I'm not sure how that will work. Um, but we're just putting ideas together of what we can do because Todd Engel, it, it definitely needs to happen soon. He's looking at um, deadlines for filing all of these things. Um, so we need to definitely get on that. And then we have uh, Tara Lee. You can go to Tara Lee's page. I know she's on here. So um, she has also started a raffle, I want to say for the tier two defendants because we have a couple tier two defendants that have to travel these people um, like I said they're under pretrial restrictions so it's harder to get jobs it's hard to get a job and get hired somewhere when you know in a month you're going to have to spend all your time in court so you're doing odd jobs you're trying to uh, trying to get caught up not to mention they're trying to get caught up because they've been incarcerated for almost two years and so they're coming home and um, having all these problems, you know, trying to dig themselves out and kind of get ahead before they go into the next trial. And they'll have to travel for the next trial. Some of them will have to have separate lodging. So, yes, it's a, also on the Bundy Ranch page, Tara Lee says. So you can go to the Bundy Ranch page. There's some really great, amazing stuff in there. They have a bench. Um, Mary Lee's son made the bench. Um, a person bought it painted it and donated it back. There's belt buckles, there's hats, there's some beautiful things in there. So please go to the Bundy Ranch page and check out that auction. Um, we also have um, a couple great organizations, America Standing for Liberty. I, I saw them come in a minute ago. I know they're doing something for John Ritzheimer currently, and they'll be doing something for Todd Engel um, coming up. You know, these people have done these auctions time and time again for all of these different causes. If you haven't went over and liked America Standing for Liberty, they make amazing cookbooks, um, calendars. I have their calendar up in my house right now. Please go there, check 
them out. They are always willing to stand up and help these different organizations. We also have the Idaho Political Prisoners Foundation. Now, I know that a lot of people have stepped out of prison, but we've also had a couple spe stepping into prison. We've had John Ritzheimer and uh, Jake Ryan and Dwayne Emmer all go to prison just recently. Um, Ryan Payne got out and then went back in in Oregon. So the Idaho Political Prisoners Foundation, please go there. The, supporting them, they, their money goes directly to commissary. You don't know how important it is to have the extra food, to have the stamps to be able to respond to people, to have them the phone time to be able to get their message out and talk to their loved ones. So please, these are all great organizations. Check all of these places out. Um, we're trying to streamline because I know everything kind of, it's, it's got, we've gotten so spread out. So I'm trying to get something out there where we can all focus and, and put something together. I also know Jeanette Finnicum has a deadline for a wrongful death suit. And so she's still working on that and she is still needing help. So we all know that the anniversary, the two year anniversary of Lavoy Finnicum's death is coming up. Now let me um, explain a little bit here. The wrongful death suit is different than the lawsuit against the officer, federal agent, I can't remember if it's federal agent or officer, I think it's a federal agent, that lied about uh, sh uh, discharging his weapon. So there is an indictment for that, there's a trial going on for that. Um, that is different than the wrongful death suit. Now, the trial for this officer, what really really just drives me nuts about this is this is a trial because he lied about discharging his weapon not because what he did was wrong and we all know what they did was completely it was a kill a kill zone they were that was set up um but they're not getting in trouble for that they're getting in trouble for lying and saying no i didn't shot shoot when i did so to me it's not good enough we need to hold these people accountable um, so, once again, the calendar call for Tier 2 is February 8th, as well as Eric Parker's sentencing is on February 8th, and possibly Scott Dressler, but we're waiting to hear on that. He said, he, as he still knows, it's the second, but we just found out that ours was changed, so um, that could be changed as well. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about is this new motion to dismiss based on outrageous government conduct and destruction of evidence put forth by Mel Bundy. And this is for tier two, but you know, these guys are always thinking about everyone else. And um, I don't know how many people on here actually go in and read through the motions and the motions have a lot of legal mumbo jumbo in there. And I mean, this thing's 28 pages. Um, the Wooten letter, same thing. It was extremely long. I have to go and print it out because I can't read it all on the computer and, and go through as much as I possibly can. I know that it matters how you stand. Page is really good about putting the motions out there. It does con uh, cost money to get the motions off the docket. So it's really great that we have places like It Matters How You Stand that will put the, the documentation right on there so that we can get in there and read them. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through a little bit of this motion and explain um, in my feelings what this means for all of them. Okay, so um, here it is a, a motion to dismiss based on outrageous government conduct and the destruction of evidence. So their introduction, the court has proceeded over three trials in the past year, with the most recent trial ending in a, in a dismissal with prejudice on January 8th. The court dismissed the case based on a series of outrageous government conduct related to discovery issues. The U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Nevada has both past history and current pat pattern and practice of such conduct. I'm going to stop right there. This is exactly why we need to hold them accountable. They have a past history and current pattern of practice of this. So what we have, what that's basically saying is they will withhold evidence and have this type of conduct so that they ensure a win. Now I remember the judge's words herself was the prosecution has a duty to uphold a, uh, the Constitution and ensure a fair trial, not a win. And this is exactly 
the opposite of what the U.S. Attorney's Office, the District of Nevada, has been doing in past and current practices. Therefore, this court should dismiss the remaining defendant's case under the court's supervised uh, advisory power. This court declared a mistrial on December 20th, almost a month and a half into trial, as the court's findings made it clear the mistrial was a result of numerous willful discovery violations by the government. Um, and they say, see the transcripts. The inadvertent discovery of key pieces of evidence that were determined to be Brady material ended up in the conviction of two defendants in the first trial, that's Greg Burleson and Todd Engel, and a hung jury in the second trial where defendant Eric Parker was forced off the witness stand while testifying in his own defense. The court should now dismiss the indictment against the defendants with prejudice. This remedy is justified and an, exi an exercise of the court's supervisory powers. See United States versus Chapman. The United States versus Chapman is what they actually were citing when the judge dismissed with prejudice um, the last trial. Then it goes on, the superseding indictment should be dismissed with, pre with prejudice as well. The court may dismiss an indictment with prejudice under two different theories. Um, the district court may dismiss an indictment on the grounds of outrageous government conduct if the conduct amounts to the due process violation, or second, if the conduct does not rise to the level of due process violation, the court may nonetheless dismiss under its supervisory powers. Un United States versus Chapman, same thing that they dismissed on the last time. So what they're talking about here is the superseding indictment. The superseding indictment is where they took the information and they went to the grand jury. Now the superseding indictment, um, and this is just my interpretation, so please, um, I'm sure the superseding indictment is available somewhere and you can find that, but um, the way that they put this to the grand jury, you have to take a superseding indictment to a grand jury and the grand jury has to agree and then put out indictments for all of these men. So every single defendant in this case has their indictments created by the superseding indictment. Now, in the superseding indictment, it has always stated that there weren't snipers and that the protesters were the ones, um, how do I put this, raising the levels here, um, creating the threat level. Um, what has happened in this last trial is they found out that the Bundy family had snipers around their house for time up before people started arriving. They were in fear for their lives and they called out for help and that's when people came. Well, this is not what the government says. The government says that um, the agents were in fear for their lives because these protesters came with weapons to free the Bundy's cattle and that the Bundy's called for help just to get their cattle back. But in, in actuality, they called for help because they were being surrounded um, by this. Yes, so my husband is helping me out here. So it's the superseding indictment is saying that the protesters were escalating this situation when actually the evidence has come out that the government and the BLM were escalating the um, experience here. So if the superseding indictment was to be dismissed, what would that mean for everyone? Well, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a legal person. Um, but the way I, I hear it is that would mean everyone is dismissed from this, including Greg, including anyone that took a plea deal. And the way that the Brady violations are so egregious here, um, I believe that this is the only way to make, to give us justice. And, um, you know, we'll go back to this. They say, you know, vind vindicating constitutional rights. A court may dismiss an indictment to remedy a violation of the defendant's constitutional rights, like Todd Ingalls' constitutional right to represent himself, Eric Parker's constitutional right to take the stand in his own defense, and all of these men's constitutional rights to call witnesses on their behalf, all of which 
were um, trampled upon because we didn't have a self-defense or defense of others defense because there was no proof of snipers that later on there was proof of snipers. Um, under the Brady versus Maryland, the prosecutor violated the defendant's constitutional due process rights when it fails to disclose evidence that is material and favorable to the defendants. Judge Gloria Navarro herself said that that is exactly what happened here. Under Giglio versus United States, favorable material includes evidence of government incentives um, or promises offered to a witness. You know, with the Wooten letter, with everything that has come out, not only is it talking about the witnesses that the government brought, you know, they had a fake FBI investigation team that was feeding alcohol to defendants. Greg Burleson, on his Longbow video, was taking shots of alcohol and saying exaggerated things because they got him drunk before he took this um, interview that he didn't know was with the FBI. So this is entrapment. This is against everyone's constitutional rights. And it, not only does this indictment, indictment need to be dismissed, it needs to be dismissed for tier two, but the entire indictment needs to be dismissed. And this is what I need your help with. I need everyone to contact the DOJ and let them know that we're not okay with these things. And also, sorry, the phone's ringing over there. And also let them know that, you know, not only do we want the indictment dismissed and, and all of, you know, we want all these men taken out, released from prison. We want all the restrictions off of everyone who is out of prison. But we would also like, sorry, there's just one second. So um, we would also like to see some of the people who were involved in this um, prosecuted because what has happened here is 19 plus people, and that's just the people that were taken and put in prison. That's not including their wives, their children, their family members. Um, their lives have been just demolished over the last couple years. And uh, we need to see accountability. Why do we need to see accountability? Let's go back to the first couple pages. The U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Nevada has a, both a past history and a current pattern of practice of such conduct. The BLM, with the Wooten letter, has a past history and pattern of conduct. The FBI, as we know with Lavoy Finicum and what happened there, has a past history and current pattern of conduct. And if we don't, if we just are accepting of, yeah, if they dismiss this indictment, we'll all be very happy, right? But we're, that is not enough. We need them to hold people accountable or it's just going to happen to someone else. And we're just going to be back here next year fighting for someone else. Um, people losing their job, it's not enough. We need to have these people held accountable. Look at what Dan Love was able to do with the Reds, with the what he did here with the Bundy Ranch, and what he did at Burning Man. How many times does a person have to go through egregious activities and breaking laws, these people who are supposed to be upholding our laws, who should be held at a high standard, how many times do they have to break it before they're fired, let alone before they're prosecuted? And this is not acceptable. And um, we really need to continue to push this. Um, so like I said, there are a lot of different um, places that you can get information on all of these different people. But please, if you have the time, write a letter, send an email to the DOJ. Um, and, and talk about the Woot letter, talk about the fact that the um, indictment needs to be dismissed entirely. Um, we actually have an invite, Eric Parker would like to join us, so I'm going to bring him on, if it will let me here. Approve. So let's see if he comes on here.
trying to get them on here. This is my first time that I've ever done that, so please bear with me while we try this. Ah, there he is. <laughs> so I just wanted to, you were talking yeah, about the indictment. I can hear him. You were talking about the indictment, and I just wanted to clarify that um, the indictment was based on lies. The same lie, the lies that have been proven wrong, right? Um, and, and I want to talk specifically about they claimed that Cliven called out for help based on lies. And those lies were that the that snipers were surrounding his house. And he he did an interview with Pete and that went out nationwide. And in that in in the indictment it reads that the conspiracy was falsified by it it was it was built on lies that they perpetrated to everybody. Um and now we know we we always knew, but but now it's been proven that these weren't lies. And so if if they were being honest to the grand jury, um, this whole indictment wouldn't have stood. Um, it, it's all based off the idea that Cliven went and called out for help and, and basically lied to the American people and, and got them and tricked them into coming and, and all this other nonsense. But, but now it's all come out that it's true. And we knew this the whole time, of course, and we, we could prove it. Uh, through the discovery, uh, but they wouldn't allow us to to do that. And, and with the court, if it isn't um, entered into evidence, it didn't really happen. And and so they would they wouldn't allow us to enter these these papers that were always there in the discovery um, into evidence. And um, the the other thing is is the escalation of force that you were talking about, and. You know, the the agent, they wouldn't let Dan Love into our trial. And instead, they sent the second in command. Um, and he got up on the stand and he told the jury that the escalation and militarization of the BLM was all due to the the protesters escalating the for, uh, escalating um, uh, the force and, and escalating uh, the rhetoric and escalating. And it was always the protesters escalating things. And that's what he told the jury. And, and that's what it says in the indictment as well. And that's why it's relevant is, is in the indictment, it says that um, the, the, there was a constant escalation that occurred. And, and we know now, um, like I said, once again, we always did know being there with the discovery and having been at the ranch ourselves. But <clears throat> now it's proven that the FBI said that they were not uh um there was no risk during during the threat analysis and the blm knew that there was no threat risk and <clears throat> escalated anyways brought in an army anyways put snipers on the mountain anyways um so i just wanted to make sure that people understand that if those basic lies weren't told in the indictment, the grand jury would have would have never okayed this thing, and 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 none of this would have ever happened. So those this whole thing was built on lies. Like as usual, the they we'll call them they they are accusing us of what they did, and they accuse Cliven of building um, this conspiracy off of lies, and and the only conspiracy was them, and. The lies that it was built on are the lies that they told the grand jury and the lies that they told the jury in these trials. So um, it's it's a very relevant motion. We'll see what happens, but the whole thing should be dropped um, because of those lies. That's all I had to say, baby. Okay. All right. It looks like he's finished. I can't hear what he is saying, so... Um... I'm going to let you get Thank back. Thank you, Eric, for coming. <laughs> I hope that he's done and he's off. Um, so once again, I'm going to go through 
Um, what we talked about in the very beginning, once again, Greg Burleson, please go to support political patriot prisoner Greg Burleson pa Facebook page to get updates on him. He's still si sitting in prison. He could use letters. Um, you know, one of the people that I didn't talk about is the Patriot Mail Project. Let me tell you, they are extremely important because the mail that these guys get, it's what pulls them out of bad days. And so if you're not familiar with this group, check them out. It's Patriot Mail Project. Um, they have the addresses. They get everyone out there. Um, they have a rotation so that everyone gets letters. We have boxes of letters ourselves um, <clears throat> that I'm, I'm going to do something really special with all of our mail um, because, I mean, all over the country, people were writing to my husband, and we, I've been able to meet with quite a few of those people, and, and it really does mean so much and it doesn't cost much it costs a stamp and, and your time uh once again support todd engel political prisoner um he also has the t-shirt um fundraiser that is his uh tattoo on a t-shirt please get over there and um order one of those t-shirts um it helps pay for his lawyer if you don't want a t-shirt but you still want to support paypal.me forward Slash freedom for Todd. He is also incarcerated in Pahrump. And um, if you're in Nevada, he, I know he needs visitors. So please go and visit him. And um, if you're not, please write. Uh, the Bundy Ranch page has the auction for Tier 2's um, fundraiser. So please head over there to check out that auction. Uh, Jeanette Finnicum has a wrongful death suit that's coming up. She's got a couple different fundraisers or things going on, so please check those out. And the calendar call for Tier 2, I want to say somebody, I saw it was the 15th, the 12th or the 15th. Um, I'm sure you can find out that information on the Bundy Ranch page. Um, the Idaho Political Prisoners Foundation, uh, donations go that are sent to them. It's 100% of your donations go right to the political prisoners. You can just donate there or you can donate and earmark it for a specific prisoner. Um, they have a rotation and they go to the political prisoners just for commissary. Once again, having that extra money for food, for calls, for stamps is so important. And once again, America standing for liberty. They take out individual needs and do auctions for those. I know they have one currently going for uh, Ritzheimer. They will have be helping with uh, Todd Engel here soon. Um, I'm sure they'll be doing something for Tier 2 as they've done something for every other chair that we've gone along. And they've done stuff for commissary. Um, if you missed out on the cookbooks and the calendars, you really did miss out. Hopefully you'll be able to catch a signed one in one of these auctions. I want to say I, I might have saw... A cookbook in the Bundy Ranch one, but I'm not for sure. The Tier 2 calendar call is the 15th, like I said. So please check out these sites. Write the DOJ. Send an email to the DOJ. Let them know. Not only do we want the indictment dismissed, we want charges on the federal agents. We want charges on the people behind this, on the federal agents, on the prosecutors in Nevada. We will not stand for this in our judicial system. We will not stand for people who are supposed to be upholding the law, breaking it at every turn. Thank you so much, everyone, for um, tuning in with us. And uh, I know we are all doing what we can, and we all had a bad, pretty rough day yesterday. But let's take that, turn it into some passion, and make some things happen.